C2 Group, specialisti in soluzioni innovative per le scuole italiane. Bentornati su Radio Didacta, amici, adesso inizia il momento pezza sotto le ascelle, <ride> cioè, cioè adesso dovrò fare l'intervista in un'altra lingua e devo fare questo switch mentale linguistico, ci metterò un po', io chiedo scusa in anticipo per il mio inglese, ma è l'emozione che parla. Abbiamo il nostro ultimo ospite della giornata ed è un ospite super importante, sono felicissima di averlo qui con noi, ovvero Soren Thompson, Head of Education Impact for Legal Education International. Welcome, Soren. Thank you so much. Thank First you. of all, sorry for my English. Uh, it's been a while since I haven't spoken, so sorry very much. Um, how are you? I am good. I am good. This is your first time here in Florence. It's my first time in Florence. Oh, tell me, Saturday is the day I go sightseeing. You can visit the city. Yes, you can see me running around Florence. Saturday oh, morning. Saturday morning. All morning or just a few hours? Just a few hours before okay. I fly out. Ah, okay, so then you go. Okay. I'm the r guy running around. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, let's talk about uh, legal education. Yes. Okay. Why is legal education actually helpful for teachers? I think Lego as a, as a tool is super intuitive to use. Okay. Everybody can build with Lego, everybody can use Lego in the class. It's easy. It is easy, it's just putting bricks together, right? But you can use it in so many different situations. No matter what you're teaching, if you're teaching STEAM, if you're teaching math, if you're teaching just Italian. I just got a book from a guy that was presenting at this conference and he's using Lego to teach chemistry, which is something we've never done before. Super surprising. So Lego can be used in many different settings. We at LEGO Education create materials specifically for teachers to use in classrooms, which means it's more than just bricks. It's also all the teaching materials that teachers need to facilitate the lessons, all the student materials so that students can build their models, but also be inspired to rip it apart and build something new and to experiment. So, And this is gamification. You can learn by playing. Learn by playing. We call it uh, learning through play. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a something we research a lot in, in LEGO, in the LEGO group. Um, and, um, and it's the best way of learning. Yes. Everybody learns best and by playing. And everybody play. loves LEGO. <laughs> of course. Um, let's talk about uh, uh, STEAM activities. Yes. How LEGO education supports the growth of female students uh, in STEAM activities? It's a really good question. Um, and... Uh, and i think it comes from the fact that we see that many female students choose not to pursue a STEAM career after they leave sort of secondary school or even yes. in high school. We see the numbers of girls drop. The way that we try to approach this is to make sure that we, we engage students at a very young age in STEAM activities, actually exposing them to STEAM, making sure that they can be creative with technology with bricks and we can teach them the methods, the STEAM methods, the engineering process, teach them design thinking. That is the best way of making sure that both boys and girls are confident in using technology in their, in their life and to tackle challenges as they move forward in their careers. And maybe, maybe they will find that, that one thing they just, oh, I want to be that STEAM whatever career, what is it, in biology, I want to be the, the STEAM advocate for, for environmental issues. But just inspire them, make them confident that technology and STEAM, that's not dangerous. Uh, is it working? It is working. I mean, it, it does mean that you go away from the, the standard way of presenting a problem. So if you just have a robot, you put it on a table and say, make it go as fast as possible. That is not the best way. But you need to come up with activities that engage everybody, that is open-ended enough so that I can come with my solution to a problem and you can come Maybe with yours. Maybe changing the points of view. Exactly. And uh, what is the situation of STEAM activities in other countries, in particular here in Italy? I think uh, STEAM is it's not a traditional subject in school, which means many, uh, many schools are struggling with how to implement STEAM. But I think what, again, the most important thing is actually that we, that we start including 
uh, STEAM activities into the normal subject. So it doesn't become this room at the end of the hall, maybe it's a little dark, maybe it's even in the basement, but it actually becomes part of everyday life. And that's where we see the real impact of STEAM, when it starts being part of even history lessons, or language lessons, or math lessons, and we start including technology in, in, in everyday school life, because STEAM is everywhere around young kids today. We have so many tools. Just look at this room. Yes. It's filled with technology. But that's the reality that young people, that we actually engage in every single day. And we want to create that ownership, just like putting two bricks together and be proud of your yes. Lego model. We want the same thing. When did uh, Lego start to understand that was it's not just a, a game, but was a tool for uh, learn? When? When? It's a so, actually, before we made plastic bricks in Lego, we made tools or we made toys out of wood. And if you open the old boxes, that they are still in the museums <laughs> probably okay. now, yes. it's the uh, 1930s. Okay. If you open the old boxes and look in the lid, actually in there was a little bit of text explaining to educators how to okay. use those, the wooden toys in the classroom and what the Uh, founding fathers of Lego did was they always had a little bit of magic in their models. So it might have been a wooden dock, but as you rolled it along the uh, along the table, it would go clack, clack, clack. So it sounded like a dock. And that's sort of the, the fun, the engagement, the motivation that has always been built into Lego, even now that we have Lego bricks. Interesting. Yeah. And in addition to uh, STEM activities, uh, I know that Lego education fosters inclusion. Can you explain how? Absolutely. Inclusion and diversity is, is a massive topic in, in, in Lego education uh, and in the Lego group as a, as a whole because we are a global company and as a global company we need to take responsibility so that we don't, just because we're Danish, only have Danes employed. So inclusion and diversity is super important for us as a group. It also means that in our sets we will have minifigures, so the little figures, yes. we will have them in different colors, we'll have them in different heights, we'll have wheelchairs in there so that we make sure that we inspire everybody. So Lego is an inclusive toy, It, we have to be. And, and, and therefore we also need to include challenges, problems, where kids are learning, but also thinking about how How others in society, how can we include more people? How can we build something that helps others? And that is prime to how we work and how we want kids to really engage with all sorts of problems. Thank you very much, uh, Soren, for being here with us. Grazie, Soren, di essere stato qui con noi. Come si dice buona continuazione in inglese? In Italy we say buona continuazione, it's... La, it's uh, Uh, good, have a good day, I don't know, have a good, uh, the rest of the day, I don't know how to say it. You too, and enjoy the rest <laughs> of this you. conference. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Per oggi abbiamo finito, grazie a tutti, ve l'ho detto, in inglese andava un po' così, però vabbè, ce l'abbiamo fatta. Ci risentiamo domani con l'ultima giornata di didacta. A domani. Grazie Soren, thank you. Thank you. C2 Group specializzata nella realizzazione di ecosistemi di apprendimento per la scuola 4.0.